Merry Christmas, everybody. This is uh, Josh. And I'm Kaylee. And Valencia with Expats Everywhere. Uh, Valencia is finally able to, to make one of these lives because we're not doing it too late. And I uh, just wanted to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, as we get going, um, if you guys want to ask us any questions about our travels, uh, we have run into some some certain COVID restriction issues. Not too bad, but we'd love to kind of explain what we've done over this trip and uh, just have fun with you guys. So uh, we're going to go for about 30 minutes. Yep. And, uh, 30 minutes for real this time. For real this time. Because <laughs> uh, we do have to make some phone calls to family and uh, see how they're doing, check in on them. But yeah. We are currently in Frankfurt, Germany. And on this trip, so we've been traveling a little bit from Portugal. We were in Luxembourg and now we're in Germany. And the rest of the time sees us in Poland and then Ukraine and Malta is the plan uh, as long as nothing changes. So now you can see why Sia is never actually in the lives because she's crazy. She's at that age where she's crazy. She'll be two on January 1st. So coming up and, uh, and yeah, so, but we wanted to make it a special Christmas for everyone. Everyone always asks about her on the lives. So here she is. Oh, sorry. That was me. So let's get to some of these questions. Josh is trying to get some more lights. The hotel we're in is a little dimly lit. That kind of works. It kind of blinds me as well. What's wrong? Come here. Are you gonna are you gonna have to leave already? You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi to everybody? Where do you wanna go? Here. Start answering questions, Josh. Okay. So We've got a lot of Merry Christmases rolling in, Merry so Christmas. I'm just going to put Merry those up Christmas. on the screen. No. Hi. No. You don't want to Merry you Christmas. Know. Feliz Natal yes. to you as well. <laughs> Bernard. Oh. All right. So All right. let's see you out of here. Okay. Bye, so everyone got to see Valencia. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yeah, yeah. And off she goes. Bye, Bye see ya. Okay, so uh, Bernard says I'm hoping to move to Lisbon okay. by December 2022. Uh, and we'll welcome any advice to make this happen. Uh, so it really depends on how you're looking to move to Portugal. Um, totally possible. Uh, if you're planning on living, you know, more full time in Portugal, the best way to do it uh, is, is similar to us with the D7 visa. Um, so we go through in really any, well, in a lot of our videos, we go through it. Uh, we can put a playlist in the description of this video in particular um, there for you to check that out, Bernard. And uh, I don't really know kind of what else to say because it's, it's very open-ended. The advice would be look at what you want to do. Most likely go for the D7. If you'd like to go for the golden visa, uh, there's a monetary requirement for that. But the stay requirement with the Golden visa is much less. So that is that. Sorry, I'm having to use our makeshift lighting. Move it here. Hey, Jeff, good to see you. Uh, he's in, in our city. Unfortunately, we're not in Porto right now to, to be hanging out with Jeff. Jeff, I hope you're having a nice Christmas super box on my behalf. Stacy, hey, good to hear from you. Merry Christmas. And Yumiko, Merry Christmas to you. So glad that you could make it. Antonio F., good to see you on the live stream. Boy Noit and Feliz Natal, back to you. Merry Christmas. Yeah, we've got a lot of people on just saying Merry Christmas. We appreciate that, guys. That's awesome. Uh, Kaylee's back. <laughs> There's yeah. Rhonda. We have a Feliz friend Natal. who is with us right now. So she has Sia. Good luck. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Val says that uh, no is her <laughs> almost two-year-old's favorite word, which is pretty similar to, to Sia's. Yeah. She, Sia uh, uses it a lot. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah is kind of what it is. And I'm the, the mama, 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 daddy, daddy is becoming the, the new thing, too, for calling on us. So it's cute, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, I have no idea what that is, but that looks German to me. I do not attempt any German words. No. You'll see we are vlogging and showing you guys what we're doing. So we'll be putting videos out about this. And 
if it's the name of a monument or a street name, I don't even try. It's <laughs> I mean, so bad. We you guys see me in Portuguese, and that's not even as hard. I think German is even worse, so I don't even try. Yeah, we give it a go in Portuguese because yeah. we're living there. And but man, Germany. Yeah, it's hard. No, don't even try. So German is hard. Thanks for that. <laughs> Peter, Have a thank wonderful you. Christmas. Thank you. Okay. How's limitations lately running into anything closed for the pandemic? Okay. So first I'll address, you address the pandemic. I'll mm -hmm. address the Christmas Eve, Christmas, uh, and, and, and Sunday issue. So where we are, at least in this state, but probably in a region of Germany, uh, but probably <laughs> all of Germany from what we gather, Christmas Eve, starting around midday, things start to shut down. Uh, then you have a lot of restaurants that will, or, or cafes that will close a little early. Um, so when I say a little early, like two or three, they'll, they'll do their lunch service and then they'll be closed in the evening. Then pretty much the city was dead today in Frankfurt all day. I found a few places that were open, um, but very, very few. And then Sunday is, you know, a, a traditional holiday day off, right? Holy day. Um, so Sunday, everything is closed. So basically we're looking at a bit over 48 hours of stores being like completely shut. Mm -hmm. And the reason we know this, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> my throat. The reason we know this is because we're running low on wipes with uh, traveling. <laughs> Thanks, Quarter. With traveling, we only packed a limited amount of diapers and wipes. And so the plan was along the way to buy what we needed. And we're running low on diapers and wipes and thought, oh, we can get them. And now we're kind of finding, oh, the next few days are a bit touch and go with that. We should have done it on the 23rd when we had a chance. Yeah. There yeah. was a grocery store, a Lidl, that we could have gotten that stuff in. And we did not. That was a big mistake. Yeah. So that was a bit of an issue. But what we're finding COVID, now, COVID yeah, with stuff. COVID stuff. So it seems like it kind of depends on where you are. Um, a lot of places in Luxembourg, for example, if you have the vaccine, then you can get in. So the Christmas markets there, they were checking. They gave you a wristband and you could get in just showing your your vaccine QR code. Um, when we were in Mannheim, which is a little outside of Frankfurt, uh, a different region, they were then requesting that you had the vaccine plus a negative test. And it all depended on if you had the booster, you were okay. Um, but also, excuse me, I got a dry throat here. Uh, if you had Thanks, the booster, James. it was okay. And if you had your vaccine within the last six months, then you were okay. If you had neither of those, then you had to have the vaccine and a negative test. So that's kind of the newer thing that's going on here. Um, so it kind of depends on what country you're in. It seems like every place is asking for the vaccine and some places are asking, asking for vaccine plus uh, a negative test. Yeah. Yeah. That's where, where we're was at right it now. that we were, where there was some confusion on that. Was that Mannheim? Hmm. Yes. So the confusion was, as you could see on the sign, like on the doors, they would put like vaccine plus test. But then we were told, we asked the hotel a little more information about it. And we were told that, that's the part that if you have the booster, then you don't need the test. And if you had the six months, your vaccine was at least within six months then from the, from today, then you don't need the test either. So it kind of depended. But that wasn't very clear on the on the door. No. Um, the, way the, door, restaurants and bars. the way the door looked, the, the infograph or whatever it was, it made it seem like everything that was listed was necessary. Mm. It wasn't like uh, an either or. Right. right. Yeah. But we didn't find that to be an issue. Actually, when we were in Frankfurt, we were in Frankfurt first and then Luxembourg. And now we're back in Frankfurt. So we caught the Christmas markets here and they were very open. There were some pockets that were they called them the restricted areas. And you just had to show your vaccine to get into that part of the Christmas market. And that was more of the food and beverage area. Yeah. But as far as like the kids stuff with like merry-go-rounds and, um, you, you know, the things that you could buy, all of that was open. So in Germany, very much so it depends on the region you're in. They're allowing their different regions to make the final decision on exactly what it looks like. Similar to the U S the way States had the autonomy to mm. decide mask, no mask. Right. And it seems like where we are, like right now in Frankfurt, it's more open. We'll see what it's like to get to Warsaw 
we fly there next week. And for Warsaw, we did have to fill out a, a digital like locator form with our information. But the vaccine plus that is sufficient for us getting into Poland. Yeah. As of right now. One observation <laughs> that we both made that was really clear whenever we got into Germany and started walking around, especially the first night we were here in Frankfurt taking a look at the Christmas markets, is that it, it looked like there were more people that would go maskless in the street compared to Portugal. Yes, but our friend who has Sia right now, uh, she was up in Berlin and she said that in Berlin, it's practically everyone is wearing masks. Mm. So, and then, you know, we're in the same country, but different areas. So mm. uh, it kind of just depends. So a lot more people wearing masks up in Berlin compared to Frankfurt. Yeah. Kind of depends. Hey, Thomas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Scrolling on through these. I just blinded myself by looking at the uh, the flashlight. Okay, the light. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Merry Christmas, Tina, everyone. Merry Christmas. Thank you for saying that. We actually haven't had any pretzels uh, yet. <laughs> we we've walked had, by. <laughs> we've had a lot of glue vine. Glue vine, yep. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not glue on a vine. It's uh, hot wine. Yeah, right? isn't that what it means? Wine. Isn't hot. it the same thing? Yeah, mold, mold wine. wine. Bit sugary, so you definitely don't want to have too many. Otherwise, hangover city. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, let's answer this question from Michael. All right. Your favorite one or two cities in the Silver Coast that you think are liv livable by your standards? Is that what it says? It's yeah. Gonna, oh, oh, we got another super sticker. Sorry. Let me give the quick shout out. Seamus, thank you for the super sticker. Yay, thank you. And, and another. Jenna. Hi. Jenna? Is that Good Jenna? You, yeah. Jenna? Jenna. Good to see hi. you. Thank you. Thanks for the super sticker. <laughs> All right. Jumping back to. Nope. That's Thomas. Sorry. Silver Coast. All right. Silver Coast. Where to um, live on the Silver Coast? Go ahead. No, I'm on just the Silver to think, Coast. It's kind of tough because a lot of those areas tend to be touristy during the summer. Yeah. Um, we actually haven't checked out a, a ton much. on the Silver Coast because, uh, I guess, Peniche is is popular. It's becoming more popular. Like you've got Peniche and Nazare. Yeah, and... I was thinking Nazare is really I nice. Um, I mean, up on the hill part of Nazare is really nice, but again, like down in the in the area, it's just kind of very beach touristy. That one street right along the water is quite touristy. So I don't know if yeah. I want to live there. The problem with living, I think, on the Silver Coast and like in Nazare and stuff, is you need a car. Yeah. So, um, so whereas, we haven't really explored living on the Silver Coast because right. we don't want a car. Uh, right, exactly. I mean, we had rented a car, which is which we were able to go in and out of some places no. at that time, but we don't want to have a car. And it's not very well connected even by train. A lot of other places are connected by train, so you can travel to other cities that way. But Nazare and the Silver Coast is not the best for that. It's okay, but it's not the best, but you really would need a car. So that's really hard to say. It it's all depends on your preference. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, is Caldish considered Silver Coast? Or is that too far south? A lot of Americans are going to Caldish to Haina. That's a big one right now. Yeah. Um, Nazare, Peniche. Those are all popular ones at this point. Yeah. Is I it, think I think Caldish would be too far inland. Oh, too far. I inland. mean, it's still in that region, but yeah. Central yeah. Silver Coast I mean, area. To be a hundred percent honest, none of those cities by our standards. Um, uh, because, because we feel like you would need a car would really be on our radar. And they're smaller. We like kind of the yeah. bigger cities where you can kind of pop out of your front door and there's a lot of stuff around that you can just walk to very easily. Yeah. And none of those places, I mean, some of those places have a little bit of that, but that plus the car yeah. aspect would be tough. I think it's amazing that there's 53 eyeballs on us. <laughs> yeah. For Christmas. Well, not 53 yeah. eyeballs. That should be 106. Six. But, <laughs> 53 yeah. people watching. Uh, sorry, I just, Rhonda. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yep, Let's yep, yep. hear about the Malta plans. Uh, they have lots of ancient monuments and stuff. We have heard about the monuments. We haven't done loads of research yet because it's like, oh, that's still a couple weeks so away. We have reached out to a couple people in Malta. Um, there's two expats that are living there. One of them has a YouTube channel, so we hope to link up with him. Another one is an expat that owns a business there, a restaurant, uh, Italian restaurant. Do you know what kind of food? Um, I don't know what kind of food. Yeah, Kaylee's on that. <laughs> and then um, uh, I just reached out to a guy named John who has a craft brewery there. He's Maltese, but I mean, maybe we'll pop over there just to to hang out and see something. So cultural stuff we've got to catch up on and see really what Malta's about. 
I mean, Malta is one of the one of the top expat destinations internationally. Yeah, like a lot of people know about Malta and and go there either for retirement or just to be a baller. Yeah. I guess I don't know. So it'll be nice to get to that Golden type of visa. weather from where we are because, I mean, today it actually snowed just a little bit. It didn't really stick, but it was snowing a little bit. I was hoping a bit more, but um, it'll be warmer there, which will be nice. But the funny thing, too, is yeah, our super, flight, we we had a ah, – thank you. Thank you. We um, we had our uh, a direct flight from Malta back to Porto, and uh, we f uh, got an email a few days ago that it was canceled. They have, they're done with that route. It no longer <laughs> exists. So we have to figure out how we're getting back to Porto. Haven't figured that out yet. Whoa, um, Alan. But, ah, oh, thank you, Alan. Massive. Oh my gosh, Merry you Christmas. You guys are crazy. Merry Christmas. <laughs> thank you, thank Alan. you so much, That's Alan. So nice of you. Thank you, Yumiko. Hey, Yumiko. Hi, is Yumiko. That a, is that a super sticker? Or just no, yeah. no oh, chat? Just no chat, but. Sorry, I interrupted. Thanks, guys. But oh, no, I was just saying, I was you saying, guys. you guys stay tuned because. We have not figured out how we're getting back to Portugal yet since that We've flight not. was canceled. <laughs> we, we think we might go through Madrid. Okay, let, let's pause on that and say Ryanair, shame on you guys. <laughs> Ryanair has now messed up two flights of ours in a very short space of time. So we're flying down to Faru after we get back to Porto. We'll be back for a few days and we're going down to Faru to shoot a specific video. and um, Real estate stuff, guys. Real estate stuff. In the Algarve. Yeah, Kaylee's got to learn how to, how all that operates. Yeah. <laughs> She's still clueless. So anyways, um, Maria, our video editor, is going to come down and help us film. And Ryanair, these guys, they just hit us up again and say, sorry, your flight's been changed. Do you accept the flight change? Yeah, and it's literally, that one is it's like the next time. day. It's a, it's a whole day. It's different. like 24 hours later. So pretty, they've just canceled that They're flight on that day. And it's you got to go the next day. Yeah. So, yeah, Ryan here, you know. You pay for being cheap. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, That's we'll let go you guys know. Yeah, Ryan here. Ryan here, you pay for being cheap. So, we'll let you know how we get back to, to Portugal. We will be going back to Portugal, though. I oh. do miss the weather. <laughs> uh, so, our trip is, we just figured it out. It's 25 class. days, 24 nights. Yes. In hotels. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, well, assuming that it, it might it change. Doesn't, it might get extended <laughs> it might because change. of the flight. We were problem. meant to fly back to, to Porto yeah. on January 13th. But now with that flight, we'll see. We might stop in Madrid uh, for a few days. We don't want to fly you know, too far with Sia. Um, yeah. And we have the flexibility with the time. So we can maybe stop somewhere else. But we'll see. I wonder how that but, sounds on the, uh, the mic. Sorry. <laughs> pouring water. You know. Okay. Go ahead. Quite chill. Uh, Merry Christmas from Canada. Can get Irish passport. Would it make it easier to move at this point? Sorry, the, you've got the yeah. thing in the way. Would it make it possible uh, or make it easier to move to Spain? Oh, to Spain for an Irish passport. Can get an Irish passport. I, I would, so if you I, have I an Irish I, passport. I would, I would imagine. <laughs> Let us look into that. That, one's, that one can be a little tricky. Email us on that one. Um, yeah, yeah. Email us on that one at info at expatsever.com. But I think that you would have the freedom to move. Yeah. If you have an Irish passport, you're part EU. of the EU. Yeah. It's EU. Then you can freely move. You just have to register with the. In Spain. You'll yeah. get a, you'll get a NIE. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's numero de identificación ex, de extranjero. Uh -huh. Um, anyways, NIE, N I E. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, you'll register. And yeah, you should be good. Yeah, to go. if Show you are able to get an Irish passport, secure that first. Yeah, Antonio's like yes. Yeah, yeah. secure that first. Yeah, and then, and then you get, can. Yeah, you then, have to register. Yeah, mm -hmm. part of the EU get agreement. Your NEA. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, love you too, Terry. All right, uh, Mark, how do you handle mail from your home country? Good question. Uh, we have Family. An, yeah. Well, we have an affiliation with Anytime Mailbox as well. So yeah. if you're looking for a service, and we will – actually, I think it's already in the description below. But if it's not, then I'll put it in right after this. But um, if you're looking for someone to handle your mail who's not family, we use family because we have gone paperless. That's the other thing. Go as paperless as possible. Yeah. But if you have some stuff, then have it sent to a family member's uh, address. But if not, Anytime Mailbox – 
will open it up and they will either send you the physical copy, depending on what you want, or they'll scan it or they'll, they will dispose shred of it. it. Yeah. Shred it. Yeah. Um, so you just get a service like that and yeah. that, and it's not too expensive. Um, but if you don't have someone who can do that for you, then a service like that, there are a few out there, but we have a code in the description for Anytime Mailbox if you want to find uh, their services, yeah. something like that. Uh, Tony, Merry Christmas Merry from Christmas. Portuguese in England. Nice. Yeah, Love that, Tony. Yumiko for pierogi. Oh, and Gol... Golobki, Golobki, yeah, <laughs> Golobki, sure. and I love pierogi. Actually, Josh got a dish today, and I thought they called it in English a what do they call it? Potato something. Fig fosh. Um, they called it a uh, potato dumpling. Potato dumpling. So I thought, yeah. oh, is that pierogi? Because I love pierogies. Um, but it, it was a little different. So I am looking forward to getting to Poland for that. So thanks, Yumiko. So Ron is giving a big shout out to Figaro de Foch. Oh, for the Silver, uh, Coast. Silver Coast. That's a good point. That's I didn't. Good, I did not place. think. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Hey, look, you can train. I mean, Rhonda will. Rhonda will tell you. Ron and Jeff will tell you. You can train all in that area. Uh, that take a train all in that area. Yeah. The thing is, though, are, that's connected. It's connected. The thing is, though, I still think a car would would be very useful. Yeah. Very useful. Mm -hmm. Not necessary, mm -hmm. though, in Figueira de Fage. Uh, out of all the places we named, that's probably the best one mm -hmm. that you that's connected by train um, that you wouldn't need a car. Yeah. Same the big fig. fig. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's going. GG on the go. Yeah. Love the name. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Michelle. Michelle. Okay. If someone is moving from the USA to Portugal, how do you suggest handling mail to be forwarded? Oh, Mark, yeah. we answered that yeah. for you. Uh, anytime mailbox right. or a no, service like that. Mark was the one that asked. Ask, yeah, <clears throat> they asked before yeah. that, yeah. Need assistance in getting a tourist visa assistant from Ghana. Oh, okay. Um, email us on that one because we'll have to check if um, if you go directly through your consulate or if you go through VFS. So that'll be a big thing. Um, but tourist visa, you should be able to apply for that. So if you need help with that, then email me at info at expatseverywhere.com and I can help you with that. Yep. Um, okay, Val, out to another Christmas lunch. We'll watch later. Thanks, Have a lovely Val. holiday and stay safe. <clears throat> We've got something in the way of right it's, on our it's screen. because it's giving us light. Yeah. I don't know how else but to it, do this. That works, though. Does it work? Okay. That Ryan Air is the worst. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. You know Michelle. Ryan Air is the worst. <laughs> No it is it, like sleazy but jet's have, not any better though jet, but, you, but they always give you good prizes and then when they tax the fawn uh -huh, it's, oh, yeah it, it's budget An airline, another it's another ryanair is horrible yeah. yet dino my knows. friend was stranded in scotland because they want a 684 oh jeez, oh, that's crazy yeah the way they do the baggage <sighs> stuff ugh, it's too much kaylee does not strike me as a, as remotely clueless <laughs> <laughs> ah, thanks, Jana. Uh, we're talking about the, uh, the, uh, the housing stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> so when it comes to those financial things. Uh, yeah. When it comes to financial things, I'm really good at spending. <laughs> and I let Josh take care of the saving part. <laughs> True. Facts. So, yeah, this Facts. is about mortgages and stuff. So it, it'll help us learn a little bit about what's going on. <laughs> well, what we, we, we got to jump to Dino's uh, super saying? chat. Dino's Hazard pay for Ryanair. Oh my goodness. That's legit. Thank that you. is so funny. Yeah. That's true. It really is. You kind of should true. always pocket away some hazard pay. So <laughs> when you the, do that. the reason we actually routed from Kiev to uh back to Porto through Malta was because the flights were eleven euros. They were cheap. And we'd never we've never been to Malta, they so we were like that, that sounds awesome. Let's mm -hmm. go. Eleven euros. And mm -hmm. then look at what they've done to us. Now they've canceled our flight. They sucked us in <laughs> they, and they stranded us. They've in stranded Malta. us and probably gonna take Could be worse. two of their silly flights to get back to Porto. Stop like the over in Madrid. Plan. It is. Right. I'm messing over but people. we are blessed to be flexible. We have you know, flexibility can work from anywhere. Blessed. So we can figure it out. And thankfully Sia is quite adaptable. And right now, normally she's sleeping at this time, but Thankfully, we have a friend who's taking care of her. Yeah. Yumiko, LCC, never say they cancel. They always say your flight is delayed by XXX hours. Yeah, exactly. That could be like 72. It could. It could. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they don't They don't the, cancel. Right? Yeah, the whole the whole route. So Ryanair, the whole route was canceled. They basically said that the uh, that the, they, for commercial reasons. Commercial reasons. They, they canceled. stopped. Yeah, so they, they stopped that route. They've stopped flying from Malta to You Puerto. probably wouldn't say cancel. They never, I mean, they never said the route was canceled. They just said for commercial reasons, we have discontinued maybe this I route or something. I think discontinued. Because we tried. We checked days like, all around it, you know, because it was like, okay, we can stay a few extra days if we have to. But 
Peter says that they're Europe Southwest. But worse. worse. I, I do think they're worse. I think I they're think worse. They're definitely I think they're worse than Southwest. Southwest. Yeah. I do. Southwest sure. is, is not great, but I think they are worse. Zato, Merry Christmas. Merry to Christmas. You. Peter, uh, yeah. if you can get an Irish passport, you have free movement. Yeah. Free movement in, in the EU. EU. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In yep. the EU. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. Okay, how do you manage the big headache of legal documents mess that comes with being an expat, having family and children to raise, their education, et cetera? It's a lot. I would say, <laughs> I would say the I would say honestly the biggest hurdle I think with being an expat in terms of like legal documents, all that, is taxes. Mm. I mean, like, I think that you're probably best off paying someone at least to do your taxes in your host country. Because you're essentially having to learn a whole new system. like, And you don't want to mess it up. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't have the time, inclination, or interest to to learn another tax system. So for us, we're going to pay someone to do our Portuguese taxes. The U.S., we have done them for years. Last year, we finally turned it over to Stephen Bush, a guy that, uh, that I did a video with on taxes, on um, expat taxes for Americans, and um, finally turned it over to him. Great. Amazing. Like literally if you just, need, yeah. If you're you go, an expat man. and need someone who knows the US system, yeah. he's an expat himself, works for a company that helps <clears> expats. <throat> he's really good. So yeah. you can email us about that. Uh well, we might actually even have it in the description as well. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh taxes for expats <laughs> is also oh. in the description section. They're a very a good, good company. Mm-hmm. We just haven't used them firsthand, but uh we've known about them for years. We've known other people that have used them, so we feel confident to recommend them. So I would say when you move abroad, there are obviously going to be hurdles and obstacles, but you have to know that going in. Have low expectations. Don't think that it's going to be exactly how it was where you moved from because it's not. It's a different culture. It's a different country. It's going to be different. You just have to be like, I'm going to get through this. And if I need to hire someone to help me, it's okay. You need to because sometimes it is difficult and you don't understand. And it's just easier, especially when you first move, to pay for someone to do that stuff. And then you figure it out as you go. And then you're like, oh, okay. Now I don't need that service because I know how it works here in this country. Um, So you just, you, you meet Meet other expats who go through this stuff. That's the education thing. You'll meet a lot of expats with education and you get recommendations. I want to say this about education as well. We, we talked about this literally today. Uh, if you're planning on moving around often, like mm-hmm. every few years, you're not going to be rooted in a place. So where your kids are going to be chopping and changing schools every few years, it's probably best to go ahead and get them into an international school and stick with that curriculum. So we're going to use American curriculum as an example. So if you get your kids in at, you know, whatever primary school level in an American school curriculum, try to find an American school at, you know, every new country you go to, Mm -hmm. because the curriculum, there's a lot of changes that happen, right? Just in moving. But if the curriculum stays the same, despite the fact that the books might be different than from one school to the other, at least the curriculum and what they're teaching and what they plan to teach is going to be standardized. Um, so it gives them some stability. some stability and some understanding and some frame of reference when they get into their new school. So they're not trying to learn a whole new school system again. Or a new language, a new language. and meet friends and the shock of moving so that it, it creates stability. So yeah. it's a good idea. And we actually learned that from Miriam. We did an interview. She lives um, in, in Storo, which is a Lisbon area. And it, that was some advice from her that was really good. Yep. All right, Michael. Hi, Josh, Kaylee, and Sia. Sorry, Sia's not here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas and happy holidays. It was so good meeting you in August. Your content uh, is awesome. Mike and Melania. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Good to Mike. See Good you. to see you. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much you for, for joining. Support. Uh, Rebecca, Merry Christmas, guys. Hope you get some snow that sticks. I know. There was snow earlier today. Place. Yeah, but it didn't really stick. I took a picture from like our hotel room and you could see it kind of on like the top part of the where the sign is of the hotel, but it was, it was, a, it was dust. A friend described it when I sent her the picture. I was like, this is what we're working with. Yeah. It was dust. <laughs> so, it was not a white Christmas. It was, yeah. But better than... Nothing, I guess. <laughs> Michelle says uh, it could be worse. Um, place to be stranded place, in Malta. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Worst places to be stranded in Malta. Very true. true. Very true. Europe's sun country or frontier. Okay, so now I've Ryanair. I've never heard of, of sun, sun country. country. I haven't either. Maybe it's a West what Coast. About, what about Spirit? Frontier, though. Spirit, yeah. Spirit's Spirit and Ryanair are similar. pretty bad. They are. Yeah. They are similar. They all <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was, that's hilarious. That's so true. Spirit, that's it. Yeah. That's bad. All right, Yolanda. Spirit, e. when I'm when I'm in spirit, my knees are like 
like up to my chest. I don't have that issue because you guys no. know I'm really short. No. You know, <laughs> when Josh and I sit and have to be the same level, then I sit on a pillow. So it looks better. Not in this, but uh, so I don't have that issue. But okay, Yolanda, even if you go paperless with the important stuff, it is not acceptable to maintain one's American bank account once you uh, are a Portuguese resident. Yes, yeah, so this one's a tricky one. I mean, there are some banks you have to check with your bank. There are some <laughs> banks that will allow it. A lot of them don't mm -hmm. um, due to some sort of financial regulation. Regulation. Thank yeah. you. Uh, but that's where we are fairly certain that anytime mailbox can come in handy in the sense that you get a, like a physical address. Mm -hmm. So you'll not have a PO box. It's not a PO box. You'll have an address uh, in the States and you can choose whatever state you want to. You I mean, obviously you're going to be paying anywhere between like five and let's say five bucks up per month, uh, depending you on want. where you are, like where you're located where you want your mailbox to be located and what services you want. Cause yeah. I think if they, if you want the service where they actually mail you stuff and you pay a little more or you pay per hi. Um, so, uh, the other thing too, what was I going to say about that, about the mailboxes? Um, Oh, what I was going to say too about that is you can always choose like we have, <clears throat> excuse me. It's a little dry here. <laughs> we dry. have wise, so if you're looking to, or I think maybe if you go with something like a, like a Chase or a Citibank, maybe some of those that that are a little better. Josh is changing the lighting up. A little better with um, going instead of having a brick and mortar bank, they do everything online. Some of those are doing that. Then you might have more options with not needing a physical address or something like that. Yeah, um, that's true. We look a little ghostly now that you moved that. Ooh. <laughs> it, right. just, it looks like it's a fake background. No, it's not. You don't see the wispies. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So let's keep going. Uh, Clement, is it expensive to get an Irish passport? Uh, uh, I don't think it's going to be expensive. You just have to go through the paperwork and, and the proof of your. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I think that whoever was asking about it, it had a very Irish looking name. <laughs> so I think they got I think yeah, it was. Some, yeah. some lineage there. Yeah. You have to have proof obviously. Of, yeah. yeah. Parents, yeah. grandparents, that type of thing. But um, expense wise, it's not too much. Uh, Trav, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Um, Peter. Oh, at least one of your parents. Go. Yep. Yep. There you go. Boom. Application stuff. Yeah. It's not expensive. Yeah, it's not you expensive. just have to have proof that you have lineage from That's there. Right. Close lineage. Parents or grandparents. Yeah. Uh, Dina says Sun Country Midwest. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> naming the crappy airlines you guys in the are US. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's that's true. Uh, Sun Country. <laughs> All right. And then, uh, yeah, credit union are more flexible. Yeah, yeah, credit unions are flexible when it comes to that banking thing, that stipulation where they want you to be, um, where they want you to have a physical address. Yeah. Oh, and Stacy, I need you to email me. I've written you on Patreon. <laughs> I'm just having a conversation. Uh, yeah, a side yeah. Chat. Email me because um, some people have been asking about something, and I I want to see see your uh, opinion on that. So yeah, send me a message. Um, okay, <laughs> is that the end of those? Oh, yeah, that's the end. And of it. hey, guess what? We're at about thirty minutes. At about thirty minutes. So so guys, we actually. like I'm I'm floored that you all wanted to hang out with us for a little bit on Christmas. I mean, this is Christmas. So you guys could be doing it with your family and everything, but we feel like you guys are family with us. We love you guys so much. Uh, we really, really appreciate um, just having this together. Yeah. Right. This, this thing that we've got through the screen. <laughs> yeah. So it's so cool. Uh, Stacy says that she will. Yeah. We have one more. <laughs> Thanks, Stacy. Uh, I tap, tap is, is bad. Back. If your flights get canceled there, tap is like Tap's a step bad. above Ryanair, EasyJet, maybe a yeah. little bit above. Yeah. They're not great. They have issues. People have issues with tap, but they wouldn't be like a super budget airline like, like some of the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're running through these last bits. The last few. Michelle's at work and it's slow. <clears throat> all right, working, guys. Huh? Thank you all so much. We hope to get you some awesome content coming out uh, in the near future. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of our travels. I'm yeah. to Portugal as well. Yes. Yeah, so we'll try to show you what we're doing. We really appreciate it. Oh, Janet, Jeremy and I were just saying how amazing it is that you're willing to chat with. <laughs> oh, we love you guys. This yeah. is fun. It was yeah. it was nice to have Sia here for the 60 seconds that she was. We on really camera. wanted her to be the, be for a little bit, but no, we put her in the well. It was like special guest was Valencia. Yeah, in the, the thumbnail, but she doesn't sit still. She's no. at that age. She's so at that, age. that was it. She saw herself for a little bit, and it was like good. And then she's like, "All right, I'm done." Yeah. So she's out. 
Thanks for Hi. Ah, Bosch Festas. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. I don't want to leave. Happy I We should. We got to get yeah. Sia back in the room. Sorry. Yeah. We'll give our friend a break. Yeah. All right, guys. It was good seeing you guys, and we will see you guys soon. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Good night.